So I'm here with Kenneth Tanner, for those of you who don't know who this white bearded man is. But Kenneth was part of our panel for the John Gospel of John discussion that we did last year into this year. And he'll also be, a, again, part of our panel as we do the book of Revelation, or we like to call it the Apocalypse of Jesus, um, starting September 9th on Thursday, September 9th. So Kenneth, it's great to have you and um, really looking forward to this. Just wanted to ask you a couple questions. Um, one of them is, tell me a little bit about your journey with the book of Revelation. I, I've heard bits and pieces, um, but you know, what kind of background did you come up with when it came to this book? Because uh, Revelation is, uh, yeah, it, people come out of the woodwork for Revelation and it's, uh, it's controversial at best right um, oh yeah so, so i'm just curious like what what your background is with it your journey well you know i i mean i i grew up in the south um in a pentecostal context um which you know i mean the people would come through and you know uh, teach on something like revelation was a you know a, a major book um and uh, people wanted the guy to come through with all the charts and, you know, kind of dispensational run through of things. Um, but, you know, I mean, just really, really bizarre things like um, when I was, I mean, literally a child, um, you know, uh, they, you know, on a weeknight, I, weekend, I don't remember, but it was at night and we went to the church and watched a film called Thief of the Night. Um, which, you know, is no child has any business watching. Um, and they would, you know, I mean, the, the church is full of adults and children. And basically the whole point of the film is to scare the living hell out of you, um, you know, so that you'll convert, you know, um, to Christ on the spot, usually in that meeting with an altar call and so forth, uh, because the basic you know, narrative is, you know, um, life is going on normally. And then all of a sudden, you know, millions of people disappear. Um, and, uh, it's of course the Christians and this thing called the rapture. And, um, you know, there's, you know, it's depicted, you know, in comical ways with like, you know, the outline of a person by their clothes laying across the sidewalk or a lawn, um, there's a, 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 a electric razor that's sort of, you know, vibrating in the sink because, you know, the person who was holding it, you know, it, it goes away and so forth. And, you know, the whole idea is that, you know, people who, you know, who ask Jesus in their heart are all, you know, taken away and the rest of the people, um, you know, are left to endure this kind of, you know, uh, one world government that takes over, you know, the entire world. And, uh, you know, there's these vans that come along and, you know, take you to concentration camps where you get your head cut off, you know. And uh, so there's guillotines and, you know, blood and, and all this kind of stuff. So one day I come home from school and uh, we had this, uh, this house that had burned down. It was an awful thing, um, a, a block over with the wife, the, the mother, single mother and the children in the house and all they all perished because the mother was smoking on the bed. And so my mother had, you know, very kind of, she was supposed to be very careful. When we had this kitchen fire that had wiped out like the cabinetry above our, like a grease fire, you know, and uh, the, the kitchen had to be renovated and so forth. Well, I walk in from, you know, it was like fourth or fifth grade or something. I come home and there is a, you know, pot of water on the stove boiling, but no sign of my mother which is an unusual thing, as I say, because of these fires that we'd experienced, both in the neighborhood and our house. And uh, so I, you know, um, I, initially I'm just kind of like, mom, hey mom, where are you? So forth, and I'm walking through the house. And, but, you know, as I got to each room, you know, and a, no sign of her, she's not answering me and so forth, this didn't make sense to me that she wouldn't be in the house, especially with something on the stove. And uh, so I look at, you know, out in the garage, the cars are there. 
you know, and all of a sudden, you know, this and 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 this is not the only moment this happened to me, but <laughs> the sense that you know, oh God, this thing has happened, and you know, me and my, I don't know, um, maybe I read too many comic books, or you know, I cheat, you know, I, you know, I uh, cheated on the spelling test or whatever, man, I'm done, you know, I'm I, I, I'm out, you know, and uh, everybody's gone and I'm left behind. I were started. Listen, were you listening to Larry at the time? Running, running. You know, you hear, yeah, you hear Larry Norman in the background. You know, you've been uh, left behind. And I, you know, I, I, I went out to the neighborhood, started like, mom, mom, you know, and I, you know, running. I, I did find her finally talking to a neighbor in the backyard of you know one of the other neighbors' houses. Um, you know, and but I literally began to fear, you know, for my soul and my life and everything else. I, I'd been raptured, you know, everyone else been raptured and I was still left behind. So as a kid, you know, I mean, I, I didn't have a consciousness of, you know, being a fairly particularly bad kid. But who knows, you know, this is, you know, they they make God seem so cavalier, you know, <laughs> who right. knows why you might, you know, be left behind or kept and you wouldn't even know. Uh, what it was that you had done so <laughs> wow and That's you know there's actually... comic books and you know uh, uh, various things jack chick comic books about all this kind of stuff and jack trick chacks uh, you know tracks about these things and uh you know david wilkins wilkerson you know late great planet earth and all this kind of stuff this was before you know all the left behind novels i was you know i was an adult when those came along but as a child it was some scary. Sh it was some scary stuff. Yeah, yeah. Hal Lindsey. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, and that's what you're saying. It's I. It's fascinating to me. Everyone that I've talked to so far, this is a common theme. All of our rock and roll journey, music, you know, was all you know. They would go, they would you know they would go into Revelation and say you know, um, you know the, you know the the different creatures with you know were kind of like you know guitar electric guitars with the uh, you know wires going down into the you know whatever it was that was considered to be dark or evil or bad or whatever you know was interpreted you know um it, it, manson did stuff like this with the book of revelation and the beatles and stuff like that it's just you know i don't know it was weird you know some some of these tent preachers and revival preachers and people that come through would just pick up from whatever source they could find, you know? So. Well, I, yeah, what I was going to say was that what's a common theme is that our, all of our journeys have started <coughs> in this fear-based narrative that we were given, yeah. you know, and, um, that's, that's fascinating to me. Um, I got a more sophisticated version because the church that I grew up in, we had uh, a bunch of the faculty of Dallas Seminary come and do prophecy conferences on Sunday night at our church. You know, and they're the guys who were writing all the books, you know, the Walvards and Pentecost and Ryrie and all those guys. And um, so I was, I was deeply versed in the dispensational Dallas yeah. viewpoint of Revelation. So. Yeah. Daniel and all of that and you know yeah. his visions the statue the, the you know yeah. yeah no doubt so uh let me ask you one more question real quick uh mm. because you because you were a panelist on the gospel of john um because of that experience as we're getting ready to do uh the apocalypse here in about six weeks or so um what are what are you looking forward to about this time? Well, I mean, you know, the book of Revelation, and this goes back for me to uh, Eugene Peterson's mm. um, wonderful book um, on, on Revelation, um, where he sees John as, as pastor and poet. Um, and, um, you know, just seeing for the first time, really, through his eyes, the story is a story of the beauty and the wonder and the glory of Jesus Christ and um, and uh, um, how 
he was present in the world to encourage everyone, you know, made in the image of God to to his way of being human and participation in his way of being God. Um, and, and so the text is really, you know, about that. And um, so it really, you know, these other ways that we were raised are diametrically really opposed to the purpose of 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 John of, of you know and, and the Holy Spirit as he inspired the apostle to you know unveil um, you know Jesus as he does by you know reading the Old Testament really and also reading the ancient world you know um, and uh, all of its philosophies and political entities and everything else um you know special interest to me is is uh, uh you know revelation 12 um and the you know heavenly vision of the birth of christ um that is contained there the woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet um, giving birth to the child who will rule the nations with a rod of iron and so forth and we have a lot of fun with this at you know at Christmas and you know teaching the children to put a dragon you know in the um, in the crash along with you know everything else. Yeah. Um, but you know it's just that heavenly vision of um, you know Christ is born you know yes, um, in you know perhaps AD four or whenever it was um, you know in real time in you know Palestine and Bethlehem. Uh, Judea and um, you know it, it, at a moment in history but also because this one is God he's you know we say and can say Christ was born today I mean uh, you know this is eternal now um, in which Christ is being born and Revelation particularly in that chapter gives us that sort of how Christ the one who's born and you know the and laid in the feed trough in Bethlehem in the cave or the stall or whatever it was, um, you know, uh, no room in the inn and everything, um, you know, is born in every moment of the world, you know, also born in us and um, how the, the cosmic dimension uh, to this uh, human who's also God, and that's just one of the moments, you know, um, of the unveiling. Um, in this wonderful, beautiful, mysterious, and bizarre, um, at times, um, story that's being told there. That's awesome. awesome. Well, thanks, Kenneth. Uh, yeah, man. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be an awesome time. Um, mm -hmm. I, it, yeah, it's, me too. it's just fun to get together everybody and discuss these things i just appreciate yeah. the spirit and attitude and, and it's just it's really it's really awesome